Hello, I'm Keith Morrison. For the next few minutes, you're going to live in the stubborn puzzles of an old-fashioned mystery. A mystery that played out for more than a year. But here, the answer will be yours in a mere 420 seconds. So let's call it a mini-mystery. It was 3 a.m. A full moon frosted the little house in silver and blue. All quiet. And then... Okay, so is this gun noise like a gunshot? No, I turned up the light to wake up my husband and it's really, really bad. Oh yes, it certainly was bad. Ben Oxley was dead, shot point blank. At first I thought I was dreaming. My ears were ringing. His wife, Melissa, was right beside him. His little daughter, Alyssa, was just down the hall, as was Melissa's 15-year-old brother, Craig. Four people in the house. One of them was dead, and nobody saw a thing. Appearing like a ghost has done this. No evidence, no weapon. Everybody in the house says, I don't know. Detective Ron Eglis has seen a lot, but a husband shot dead right beside a wife who claims to have seen nothing. Before very long, the detective was stuck in the weeds contemplating the politics of love. They married on a beach at sunset, and all three of them said their vows. Melissa and Ben, and his daughter, who seemed so very happy with her new stepmother. Alyssa, will you promise to share in the love of this family? A beautiful blended family. But now, somebody killed Ben. So who? Arriving police officers discovered shotgun shells in the bedroom where Melissa's brother Craig was apparently sleeping. Number eight birdshot, exactly the type that killed Ben. The police got him out of bed, tried to gauge whether his apparent confusion was real, then tested his hands for gunshot residue. But Craig came up clean. He could not have fired the weapon that killed Ben. Instead, the prime suspect was the surviving occupant of the fatal marriage bed. Yes, the wife. These days, 221-08. When Melissa said someone else must have murdered her husband, it just didn't make sense. Why don't they take you out? I mean, you're right there. Another thing I don't understand is why somebody shoots him, why you not see anything? I don't know. But Melissa was covered with blood and gunshot residue. Soon the detective discovered a $400,000 life insurance policy. It sounds a lot like she was, she had the motivation to want this to happen. I was feeling, thinking that you were going to blame for your husband. <laughs> but enough for an arrest? No, not yet at least. Anyway, there were more leads to follow. It had been an ugly divorce and a bitter custody battle over little Alyssa. Ben's ex-wife, Dawn, came out on the losing end. Also, Dawn needed to pay Ben a monthly fee uh, as child support. And from what Melissa told us, that didn't sit very well with Dawn. Naturally, the police had to consider Dawn a possible suspect. They went, unannounced, to see her within a couple of hours of the murder and found her fast asleep. And what time did you think you went to sleep? Four. Mind you, though, she wasn't alone. James Maclean was living with Don off and on just then, so they took young James downtown, asked aggressive questions. Were you and Don in any way involved in the planning of the death of Ben? No. Do I know who killed Ben? No. Don killed Ben? No. I'm looking you in your eyes. Doesn't mean I did not kill him. And that was that. Investigation stalled, no proof linking any of the suspects to the crime. But around town, doubt and suspicion followed Melissa like a cloud. Even little Alyssa heard it from her father's sister. She told me that she thought my stepmom um, killed my dad. It must have been pretty weird to hear that. Yeah, I didn't believe it, but... There was a new court order. Alyssa was removed from Melissa's care and sent back to her mother, Dawn. And for a year and a half, the case went nowhere. On toward cold case territory. Getting there. It was out of the blue one afternoon when the detective's phone rang. 
It was the ex-wife, Dawn. She basically said she couldn't take it anymore, and she wanted to talk. And did she ever have a story to tell? In the middle of the night, night of the murder, she said, James disappeared for a few hours, then woke her up to tell her he had killed Ben, and she was horrified. I did not plan this. I did not want Ben dead. So the cops questioned James, and eventually he admitted it. He shot Ben Oxley. We asked to hear his story, only fair. And once again, we encountered, in a rather twisted way, a love story. I just wanted, I wanted to make Don happy. But it's the way he made her happy that told the tale. James said he killed Ben because Don wanted him, kept after him to do it, went with him to the house that night, showed him where Ben was sleeping. It was Don behind the murder all along. She's happy that I was going to kill somebody, you know? So, was Don arrested, put on trial for murder? No. Why? Because before James told his story, the prosecutor had already given Don immunity for turning him in. Don, who has always maintained her innocence, can never be charged with murdering Ben. Unless somehow the prosecutor someday can prove she lied when she made her deal and threw her boyfriend out of the bus. What is the degree of her responsibility in your mind for what happened? I have a harder time with Don than I do James if it wasn't for her, none of it would happen. James didn't know us. But there was a kind of justice at the end. Melissa fought hard for custody of Alyssa, the daughter Ben Oxley so loved. And Melissa won. If he's looking down and watching you, what would he think about his daughter? I think he still loves me and that I'm doing much better than I was at my other house. Do you miss him? Yeah, I miss him a lot. Hey, Dateline fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch digital exclusives and original content from the creators of Dateline.